Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the John Deere Classic. This is my before the lock show. I'm going to go over ownership projections, my top five value plays, weather, you name it, everything you need to know before you lock in those final DFS lineups and get you ready. If there's any other extra bets you might want to make, you might see something here that you're interested in. So first off, thank you for stopping by and let's get into this. So the first thing I want to cover is my giveaway. Yes, it is for the British Open, the Open now called. And what is it? I am giving away five entries into the $100 Millie Maker. And that hopefully will give you a little better chance to at least double your money, but even have a shot at the million dollars. And all you need to do is like this video, share it if you'd like, and also subscribe if you're not a subscriber and simply just tell me who do you think is going to win the Open I've got a lot of responses, so I appreciate that. Just put it down in the YouTube comments. What that will do then is I will put you into this random spin generator and pick five winners, and I will announce that on my Monday uh, preview show for the Open. And so this is pretty much the last opportunity. Of course, if you see this over the weekend, feel free. But on Monday, I'm going to take all those entries, put them in, and get my picks, and then announce uh, the winners on July 12th. Again, that's Monday on my preview show. Okay. So looking through some of the pressers, and it's kind of sad. You know you don't have the greatest tournament or field when there's maybe a couple guys that did pressers and then a ton of senior tour pressers. Uh, but in short, there was this guy that came up uh, on my radar, and this is simply just to bring him to your guys' radar. This is Eric Cole. He actually Monday qualified. He's qualified three times for the PGA Tour doing a Monday qualifier. And what I'm going to do is jump over. We're going to just look into a little bit of this guy's background information. And he's 6,100 on DraftKings. Um, just someone that you might want to look at if you want to differentiate. You know, nothing's worse than when you've, you know, got your lineups and you start watching the golf and all of a sudden some random guy pops up that you've never heard of. And you're like, wait a minute, how come Golf Guru or nobody else told me about this guy? And again, I just want to bring him on your radar. That is it. All right, let's go look at some information. Okay. So you can simply do this too. I'm just looking at, uh, on like the PGA Tour website, you can pull up Eric Cole. And there's a couple things that I'll point out. So this is looking at Corn Ferry. So he is a Corn Ferry player. Uh, the one thing that I noticed, if you scroll all the way down, he's actually won 35 times on the mini tours. Now that's, you know, that could be, you know, the Maverick, the Hooters, the Sunshine. There's quite a few different mini tours. That doesn't mean a whole lot, but I just want to bring that to your attention. He's qualified. This will be his third tournament on the PGA. But you can see back in uh, March, he actually uh, qualified for Corrales, Punta Cana. He actually had a, he tied for 22nd place, which, you know, again, not a strong field. Um, but it's pretty much why I'm bringing you guys' attention. I mean, it's a pretty similar field. Don't want to say it's a similar course. Um, that's, of course, an ocean course, a little longer, and, of course, a little more wide open. Uh, but he shot 400. The other, he qualified here recently for the U.S. Open. Uh, but you can see he did not make the cut and shot eight over. So from a PGA experience, that is his world that we know so far. But if you go to Corn Ferry, um, you know, he's actually not won on the Corn Ferry. From my understanding from the presser, he found out that he can get into the Corn Ferry uh, Tour Finals if he actually does pretty well in a couple PGA events. That's hence what I got why he's trying to, uh, you know, qualify more. The last thing I would say is one of those Monday qualifiers was actually a 10-man playoff. Uh, that he came out as the victor. So that's pretty crazy. I think they had to play like six holes to whittle that 10-man field down. Um, and if we just look through some of his finishes, this is the 2020 season. You know, he had a 17th. Just kind of looking through here. He had a T3 at the Savannah Golf Championship back in October of 2020. Uh, MGM, he had a T22 back in April, looks like, of this year. A T15 at the Advent Health Championship. You know, and it's some missed cuts at a T55. So it's not like he's coming off the Corn Ferry Tour in Fuego. He is a Monday qualifier. Literally, I just wanted to bring him to your attention for 6,100. In this field, could he make the cut? Yep. Could he differentiate your lineup? Yes. And that's it. So that's all I'm going to talk about with Eric Cole. All right. Let's go. Let's just jump. Well, you know what? We'll just go right down the path. So we'll go over the guys that I'm looking at. Uh, these are my value plays. As we already know, I mean, this uh, field is rough to begin with. So I'm now down below the 7,500 threshold. And I sifted through all the trash, and there is a ton of it. And I've got 
uh, five guys that I'm going to highlight for you, uh, eight total. Um, but we're just going to look at, and these are just some guys that you might want to look at when you, if you're going to be down here. Um, you know, there's really not a, a super strong reason. I mean, we're paying quite a bit of money uh, for your Seamus Power. You got 9K, Hank Lobota is at 8,400. I mean, guys that we're used to paying low 6,000s, we're now paying like 9,000. So ultimately, you're going to have to end up some some guys, at least one or two probably in this range. Uh, kind of the lineups that I built. And I didn't build a lot for DFS. Um, what I did is I had to plug one of these guys in at the 7,000 range. Um, and these are the guys that I'm kind of looking at. So enough said. Uh, as mentioned, I am over in Fantasy National. I've got no filters on. Just like what I did on my money picks, uh, you're looking at the mini model, same thing. This is over the last 12 rounds, so all recent form. This is their birdies gained over the last 12 rounds. And then, of course, over here, you got recent results in tournament history. So the first guy that I landed on, who is super volatile, one time was a pretty good player. That's Scott Piercy, past five events. He's got three cuts, a DQ, so signed the wrong card or something happened or signed the wrong score on his card, I'm guessing. But he had a T19 at Palmetto, so that's his one bright spot. But you can see the guy can go in Fuego. Typically, Scott Piercy on a showdown play could be, you know, very live. The guy can go out and shoot six under, but easily shoot eight over the next day. But you can see out of this field over his last 12 rounds, uh, he's gained, you know, on approach, he's 13th against this field. You know, I'd say, you know, dead average against this field on driving. So hitting the green or hitting, I'm sorry, hitting the fairway or hitting the fringe and, you know, reaching the green in two or on his approach. Uh, you can see he does gain on par fives, but that's 75 to 100. He's, you know, lower in the field. Simplest way to put it. You can see his ownership's pretty low at 2.9%. Cost you 7,300. And we go jump on Scott. We'll look at a little further information. You can see the putters where he struggles. Bent is technically his worst surface, but that's, you know, negative 0.2, just so you understand. Uh, you know, these bars, you know, they look like one thing, but when you really get into the, the, the gist of it, it's not that significant, unless it literally says a half stroke or a full stroke. You can see kind of a slight flat, you know, on his stroke gain over, you know, his career, nothing spectacular. You can see he's been gaining also off the tee. So it's not off the tee. Approach has been okay too. So, you know, four of his last five, it's been the putter. Um, and you can see, you know, at the Palmetto, the one time he's done anything uh, super recent, he gained almost four and a half, he gained four and a half strokes. The Wells Fargo is where he popped back up on my radar. You can see he did everything well, but actually, you know, if he could have putted, he could have had a chance to uh, to win that thing. So that being said, um, you know, someone that you might want to look at, again, he is very volatile, but almost like a Siwoo Kim um, where, you know, if the putter goes, Scott Piercy can do something. And in one time, I mean, we go look at some history. Um, you know, you can see back in 2020, he had a, kind of a decent run here. 19th at the Shriners, a 14th at Bermuda, 18th at RSM. Um you know, waste management, he had a six. So when I pull in some of the comp courses, trying to see, you know, back 2019, he had a second at Byron Nelson, a third at RBC. Yeah, and I'm going back a bit. I'll, all I'm saying is this guy for down here is one of the better pedig pedigrees of a history of a good golfer. Um, I'm trying to see if I see where his last win. So he won in 2015 at the Barbasol, which is funny enough, coming up, uh, I think, against the... The British Open, he had a second at the Sony. Again, I'm scrolling back a ways here. Um, done pretty well at TPC Scottsdale. Won the Canadian Open. Real simple course. Uh, I think it was Glen Abbey. Um, yeah. Anyways, and I'll bump them against just so you can see the comparable courses. All right. So if we look at the John Deere. So he's had a third way back in 2012, a 14th in 2015. Miscut the most recent in 2018. At the Wyndham, his best showing was in 2014. He had a 12th, but a 69th uh, most recently. The Amex, miscut recently, but best showing was a 6th place back in 2018. A 61st uh, back in 2020. Tournament of Champions, it's been a while, but he had a 19th in 2019. Uh, you know, so when he gets there, I mean, I guess top half of the field, we'll put it that way. Uh, Shriners, he had a 19th uh, in 2020. A 10th back in 2018, a 7th. So like I kind of mentioned, TPC Scottsdale, it gets around okay. What about the Byron Nelson? So miscut at TPC Craig Ranch, but he had a second place at Trinity Forest back in 2019. 
I think they missed a cut at the Rocket Mortgage just recently. And then the waste management, as I mentioned, uh, he had a six, a third, an eighth. So from a comparable course side, he's had some successes. Um, and but, you know, like I said, it's not a terrible play from a projected ownership. He could definitely differentiate. And you can see, I think out of all these guys, he gains the most birdies. Now, again, he also gets a ton of bogeys. Um, and this is probably scaring a lot of people off. But if you're down here, it's not, you know, not terrible to sprinkle him in. Uh, he can pop. I mean, the guy has one on tour. Um, he can, you know, would be even a bad, like, top 10. I don't know what his odds are, but from a betting perspective, I might check out to see where he uh, sits for a top 10. All right, Bryce Garnett. Um, you know, of course, Bryce had that good showing at the Travelers. It was a super hot putter. Um, he missed a cut at the Rocket, but, you know, made the cut to Charles Schwab, to Byron Nelson. You can see he's positive here on birdies game. That's good down here. Like, it's rare. Um, I pulled the guys from a birdies gain. This is about as good as it gets down here. So, you know, that he is gaining birdies uh, over his last 12 rounds is good showing. You can see on my mini model, you know, it does everything pretty well against the field, putting as his strength. If we go click on Bryce Garnett, and funny enough, it's pretty bad when you got Bryce Garnett on your opening screen, but I always put the guys typically that I'm talking about. So you can see I'm bent. You know, he's gained almost, uh, you know, a quarter of a stroke uh, over his lifetime. You can see... The good news is his stroke gain has been on the way up. And you can see last, uh, you know, at the Rocket Mortgage, he actually gained on approach around the green. Funny enough, it was the putter. Here's that, you know, gaining almost 14 strokes with a putter at the Travelers. Now that's, and, you know, probably, I don't know if he's ever repeated something like that. That's, that is crazy. I'm just scrolling down to see his highest putting. I mean, that'd be about 6.7 at the window, maybe. Anyway, so, you know. To duplicate that, that is not going to happen. But if he could do this, you know, I'm not so worried about off the tee, but if he can gain on approach, gain around the green, and just be positive on the putting, I mean, at least get you to the weekend, um, you know, that'd be a solid. All right, so at the John Deere, he made the cut the last time this event was held. Some miscuts sprinkled in at a 45th before that. If we look at the Wyndham, miscut recently, but he's had a 6, a couple 20ths. So not too bad at the Wyndham. The Amex... Missed cuts recently, but he had a 63rd. You know, nothing great there. 64th and 48th. So nothing to write home about there. TOC. So 2019, he did make the Tournament of Champions. So he must have won. I think he won uh, in the Dominican Republic, if I remember right. But he had a 19th there. Let's go see his last win. I know he has won. Yeah, so at Corrales, Punta Cana, back in 2018 is when he won. So he does have a win on tour. Um, that's that's a positive. What about an OHL? So this is Mayakoba. He had a 32nd recently, an 11th, a 5th. So the island courses, uh, Bryce Garnett's not a bad play when you get in the Bermuda and Corrales, uh, you know, the Puerto Rico Open, PRO. Shriners recently had a 51st, a couple missed cuts, so nothing great there at TPC Scottsdale. The Nelson, he had a 47th at TPC Craig Ranch. The Rocket, he missed a cut, as I mentioned, but he had a 17th before that. And the Waste Management, three missed cuts and made the cut in 2020 and shot, uh, came in 52nd. So, again, you know, nothing spectacular, uh, but just over recent form, you know, something that you can hang your hat on. Again, lower ownership. Ryan Armour, you know, we saw the good showing at the Palmetto. Again, solid and the birdies gained over the last 12. So, again, trying to get us points, um, you know. Good drive, so good driver of the ball, ranked fourth out of this field. Everything else we'll say is a little above average. Um, missed the cut twice here at John Deere, but did make the cut in 2015. You know, do what do what you want with that. I mean, uh, you can see typically the putters where his nemesis has been from a stroke gain analysis, you know, slightly trending up uh, recently. You can kind of see that off the tee has been doing well. Approach, you know, two out of three has been gaining strokes. Last time he gained almost six strokes. So again, the putter is, you know, the, the equalizer, but uh, if he can gain on putting, you know, he could be live here. If we run him again, so we already looked at the John Deere. Let's go look at the Wyndham. Done pretty well at the Wyndham. So I'm going to keep in mind, you know, a fourth and eighth, a couple 20ths. So, you know, uh, the Amex. Had a 16th recently, but also some missed cuts in there. 
Tournament of Champions 2018, so he does have a win uh, on the PGA Tour, but a 20th back in 2018. OHL Mayakoba, miscut recently, but a 33rd or 21st. We look at the Nelson, a 26th, a 27th, and a 59th, but a 26th is the most recent recently. That's at TPC Craig Ranch. I don't know if I pulled up Shriners. Uh, three miscuts at a 20th back in 2017, so nothing really to write home about there. The Rocket recently missed a cup, but he had a fourth previously and a 46 before that. And last but not least, Waste Management never made the cut. That's interesting. So, again, from, a, a, you know, recent results, you know, made three out of the last five cuts. Someone might want to look. You can see his ownership's a little higher than the other guys. Uh, Vaughn Taylor, which was actually one of my value plays last week. I don't think he made the cut, if I remember right. You can see this right here at the very end. Uh, did not, but usually the guy will produce some birdies. Uh, and you can see that here recently, a couple missed cuts. Um, but you can see his ownership. And a lot of this is on, you know, what he's done at this tournament. So at T6, the last time I was held here, so made to cut four out of the five times. So that's why that ownership's up. And you can see against the field, the putter is, you know, I would say one of his more elite areas, but everything else I'll just say is average against this field. We go click on Mr. Vaughn Taylor, take a look at his putting splits. So he's neutral on bent, uh, gains on the other two. Stroke gain has been slightly on the way up. Um, if we look at what he's been doing okay, approach and around the green and the putter we mentioned, you know, he's had some showings where he's gained six, almost 10 strokes, nine strokes. Um, that's, you know, where he pops. So Valer or Valspar, actually, I had him, I think, to hit a top 10 or top 20. I think it was top 20. And he paid off like 40 to one. So that was that was nice. Um, I know Von Taylor. I've, I've played him in my past uh, on showdowns. He used to be a pretty solid showdown player. Um, but anyways, I get someone that you might want to look at. If we pull up, we already know he's done well at John Deere. The Wyndham, he's made three out of the five cuts, 39th recently. The Amex, you know, has made a cut quite a few times. Best showing was a 7th, a 10th, but recently was a 60th. Tournament of Champions, so he's won on tour. He's, that was a 24th back in 2017. OHL miscut recently, but he had a second back in 2019. You know, made the cut the other three times. Let's take a look at Shriners. Miscut recently, made the cut three times, missed the cut twice. So three out of five uh, for TPC Scottsdale. What do you do with the Nelson? Missed the cut at TPC Craig Ranch, but had a 17th at Trinity Forest back in 2019. And the Rocket miscut recently, a 46 before that. And lastly, Waste Management, three cuts in the last, but it's had some good showings there previously, but struggled recently. So, again, Vaughn Taylor, out of these guys uh, that you've got to pick down here, somebody that you might want to plug in. And then my uh, last guy that is like my main, of course, Sadoshi Gadire. He comes up fourth on my model. I told you I hit him uh, first round leader. I believe that was at the Travelers. Um, but you can see, you know, good form, but it's starting to trend. So he had that 11th, a 13th, a 19th, a 36th, a missed cut. That makes me a little nervous because Sadoshi Gadire has just recently kind of popped up back on the radar. But you can see the guy's making birdies, which means points to us. The putter's been in Fuego, but he's also been hitting good drives again over the last 12 rounds. Doesn't really take super advantage of the par fives, but really good from the 75 to 100. Again, over the last 12 rounds, you can see his ownership. People are also... Looking at him, he's almost 10%. So, you know, I get that. I mean, when you get down to this level, he's one of the safer plays. Um, over his life, typically gains on POA. Uh, but, you know, barely, barely, almost neutral on bent. Loses on Bermuda. You can see this, like, since his start, just this great decline. And then recently, he's just been starting to gain again on stroke gain. You can see the putter is what typically keeps him. But he's also, you know, over his last 20 tournaments, it's around the green he struggles. But... Barely gains off the team approach, so that's not terrible. You can see the last two events, you know, it's it's been a lot with the putter over here. Um, but typically, he could get off the tee, and, you know, it hits the approach. Um, and if he keeps his putter uh, going like this, you know, definitely make the cut and could end up, you know, a top 20. So, again, somebody you might want to look at from a betting perspective. Uh, if you don't want to roster him in DFS, but maybe put him in for a top 20, um, I don't know what the odds are. Probably not that great, to be honest. But, um, you know, something to look at. Uh, and if we go look at him real quick, you know, typically, I think we did this last time because he was also, him and Vaughn Taylor were my value plays last week. Um, 
I remember, I don't think it's nothing to write home about, but we'll just look. So miscut of John Deere, uh, the Wyndham miscuts, the Amex miscut, TOC, so we won one tournament. That was RBC Heritage, which is not a bad comp course for this place. I believe that's correct. Let me just verify that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he won at the RBC. Yeah. So I think that's his only win. And that was pretty early in his career when he came out uh, 2018. All right. OHL. He had a 40th recently, an 80th before that. Shriners, a couple of miscuts, uh, but had a 41st before that. The Nelson, he had that 13th recently at TPC Craig Ranch. The Rocket, a couple of miscuts. And the Waste Management, uh, you know, a 63rd. So what I kind of put this is, if you think about it, is like Hank Laboda and Seamus Power, we are paying quite a bit for those guys um, just because of the recent hot hand. So if you think about it, Sadoshi, I mean, I had to go pull those guys up. Okay, so we take a look at Hank Laboda. Again, as I was talking about, we're paying for this T4 and T5. So we're paying for recent. And if you look at Kadir, you know, you're 1400 more dollars. It's, you know, pretty similar, actually better here. He just has that miscut recently and he didn't crack the top 10, but he's had like 11th, the 12th, whatever. All I'm saying is, you know what, for the price, um, it's not a bad play. So I think I know the other guys I was going to talk about. All right. So the other guy I was going to say it was Ben Martin is somebody you might want to look at. Uh, he's not one of my top five value plays, but, you know, he's had a good tournament history here. You can see other people are looking 6% projection ownership. He had a second here before. So he's made some cuts, you know, recent form, you know, two out of three at a, you know, a T11 at Wells Fargo, Byron Nelson. You can see he kind of popped right here. You can see from my stroke model, you know, doing things pretty well. So, you know, Ben Martin could be somebody down here that you might want to look at. The other guy I was thinking of was Kevin Tway. Um, you know, recently popped up at the Rocket Mortgage. So he's made three out of the last five cuts. You can see his birdies gained are a little better. Um, we can also look at his proximity for 75 to 100. He's ranking first, uh, gaining on par fives. And his projected ownership, you know, at 6,300, you can see my big model, again, over the last 12 rounds, you know, ended up 14th. So a couple other ideas for you down in the value play area. So that's just some thoughts. And then uh, let's go look at projected ownership. Recording this uh, oh, about uh, 3 o'clock on Wednesday. So pretty close. Um, it's kind of funny. I was just looking at the numbers. Not a total, uh, to not a total lot of lineups being created. No shocker there. But... Over here is where we want to look. This is going to give you a pretty accurate of what, uh, when it, the lock comes down at DF uh, DraftKings. Um, you can see, no shocker, Daniel Berger and Brian Harmon are the two highest owned, I believe, out of all these guys. Um, then you see the yellows would be like the next. So, Sun JM at 16, you know, Russ Henley, Kevin Streelman, um, you know, Kevin Knott, 9,500, no shocker that he's not getting a ton of love, but. You know, Kevin Na could do very well here. Uh, you know, it suits his kind of game. Of course, Alex Noren having a good show in recently. Pops all the way up to 9,300. Um, Seamus Powers, 17%. You got McNeely at 15. You know, pretty much all these guys above, like, the 8,000 range are, you know, not saying it's super chalky, but... You know, I think, yeah, if I was going to take the risk over Zach Johnson, over Hank Labota, I'd probably go ahead and roster Hammer and Hank right now. Um, you know, Ryan Moore, there's a differentiation point right there uh, at 3.5%, you know, uh, something that you might want to think about if you're trying to differentiate. Sebastian Munoz uh, at 5%, again, somebody that you might want to look at. I mean, tell me that, you know, Sebastian Munoz won at Sanderson Farms, I think, what, a year ago? Um, you know, if you, if you put the pedigree also, let's go take a look. You know, I just want to talk about Sebastian. Now that we're there, let's go talk a little bit about Sebastian Munoz. Gains on bent. And if we look at, he had a third at Charles Schwab. I think people forget that. Yeah, it was a lot done with the putter. But, you know, these three miscuts kind of threw people off. But if you go back to the Zozo and the CJ Cup. Now, this is elite, no-cut fields of the best, pretty much the best 80 I think it's about 80 players, if I remember correctly, 78 to 80. Um, he came in ninth and, and 14th against those fields. 
So all I'm stating is if you're going to roster, you know, a Zach Johnson who costs more or a Hank Laboda or Ryan Moore or Doc Redman, I'm sorry, but Sebastian Munoz is a better player, uh, hands down. So I'm just giving you that little tidbit. You know, uh, there is no reason now. Are you know the, a couple of miscuts? I get it, but for 8100 in this crap field, I'd rather put Sebastian Munoz in play. So that's my opinion. Even Charles Howell over his you know a career and what he's even he had a good run. Let's go look at Charles Howell over here. Um, I wasn't really planning on going to, but you say you know he does gain on bent, good on the stroke gain. You know, he had that 18th at RBC. He had a ninth at the players. Way better field, a 19th. So he had this little run here, 19th at Sony, 23rd at, you know. So I get these two missed cuts here, but that's at the Memorial at Murfield. Um, you know, the Roger Mortgage. But again, I'm just giving you ideas. If you're thinking of rostering this other crap, um, you know, CH3 is a better player than a lot of those guys above there. Um, so that's all. I mean, I get that Troy Merritt has been a little hot and Seamus Power um, and um, Hank Laboda, But, you know, if you're trying to different, I see, you know, actually, I will probably build a lineup literally with those guys. Like, give me the five percenters that are not owned that have a better pedigree. I'll ride that all day. Um, anyways, I'll get off that. Just see Steve Stricker, of course, coming off a win. Uh, I think a wire to wire win on the. Champion store and it's been playing pretty well on the PGA tour. So, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, Patty Perez has been recent form, but uh, you know, that could crack at any moment. Try to see if there's anybody else down here. Of course, EVR is playing in the uh British Open. He is withdrawn from this. I think JT Poston might not be a bad play at 1.8% ownership. Something you could think about. Here's my guys down here. I think that are not terrible plays. See anybody else? Who's this? Henrik Norlander. I looked at him. Um, I didn't really like against his comparable courses. There was also some. Let's go look at Henrik Norlander real quick, just because he's at ten percent. Okay, so he loses on bent, but that's not by a ton. I mean, um, you can see he had quite a bit of dip here, kind of flattening out now. So you know. T to green, he's been playing pretty well. It's just if he hits on the putter or not. Um, you know, he had this streak here, missed the cut at the players, the Honda, the Valero, the RBC, Wells Fargo. He made the cut at there, missed the cut at there. I mean, he had it, you know, right? I, I guess the short of it is people must be seeing, you know, this off the tee. So, you know, T to green, he's been doing well. Um, but he hasn't been scoring great. So I don't know. I mean, I wasn't super stoked uh, about playing Norlander, but, you know. I think it's not a course that I think of Norlander. I think of a, almost a tougher, longer track would be a better fit for him, but whatever. Um, here we go. So Sadoshi's at 11%, so even more than what I was saying. You got Roger Sloan coming in at 11% down here. You got Shank uh, at 10%. I think that's about it. All the rest of this should be uh, pretty low. And you're not going to see that Eric Cole even on here. Uh, Monday qualifiers don't typically get into uh, Fantasy National. Okay, uh, the last thing I was going to cover with you guys is weather. And just real quick, just so you know where to go. If you go to WindFinder, go to this uh, Kelowna. Um, it's right next to Silvis, right next to uh, where the course is at. Um, from a weather perspective, we look at Thursday... And like I said, you know, it's going to be damp there. It's raining here as I speak in Michigan. Um, but, you know, it looks like they've got a little weather as we speak on Wednesday in the early morning or early evening, uh, Thursday, however you want to put that. Uh, but it looks like they should get golf, dry golf, and, you know, nothing crazy on Thursday. But it's going to be wet, so we're not going to get a lot of roll. Um, just a lot like the Rocket Mortgage for Thursday, Friday, kind of same here. Wind's kicking up in the afternoon. Saturday, you got a little more wind here to look at, some rain in the morning. So on showdown, keep an eye out for that. And then Sunday right now is where the most wind looks like. And it, funny enough, it's going to be morning and rain. Um, you know, I didn't see any lightning shown on any of this, but who knows? So they might have to play in that. So just keep an eye open uh, when you're putting a finale showdown plays together. And that's about it from weather. But the biggest thing I want to tell you, go to Windfinder, go to Kelowna, keep an eye on it uh, over the weekend if you're uh, – 
playing a bunch of showdown and uh good luck with that i think that's it let's uh let's go wrap this thing up okay so to summarize my top value plays that i like for the john deere classic we are going with scott piercy super volatile but can go out there and make a bunch of birdies can also go out there and make a bunch of bogeys you've got ryan armor who uh you know has popped up here or there but you know this kind of fits his course kind of you know plots his way around if he you know makes the putts he could be very live here same kind of player bryce garnett uh, identical sadoshi been very hot of course he missed a cut recently here at the rocket but if he keeps that putter up uh, could also be very live to get you you know a top 20 and last but not least uh he's got a good history here uh we're gonna go with uh, mr vaughn taylor and uh so that's it that's it from my value plays and i appreciate you guys again spending some time with me hope this helps uh hope this helps you with you guys your lines ups and also helps you uh with some uh with some of your betting Again, do me the great honor if you'd click the like button. Also, subscribe. If you're checking me out for the first time, you like what I do, you'll get notifications. I put three shows out a week, uh, so you'll be first to notify. So click that subscribe. And also, you want to click the subscribe and tell me who is going to win the Open, the British Open, so you can get in that $100 entry multi-million maker. Going to be pulling those uh, either probably on Monday, um, and I'll announce them on the Monday show. And last but not least, got any comments or anything you want to share with me or ask, you know, hit me up on YouTube comments or follow me on Twitter at DFS Golf Guru. All the best of luck to us. Let's go have a profitable uh, John Deere Classic. And again, I'm going to be betting a lot of this, doing a little bit of DFS, but more of a betting uh, tournament for me and excited that the Open's coming. All right, guys, take care. Have a great weekend. Hey.